You don't have to go to jail to play some retro video games. The following NES games are available today on the Nintendo Switch online service. If you have a Switch, hey, you're ready to go. We're talking Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, 3, and the Lost Levels. You probably remember your first Mario game. Mario is like the gates of hell from Dante or something. Before me, nothing was created, nothing but the eternal and I last eternally. Of course, these aren't the first video games, but they're some of the most influential. If Mario tells us anything, it is that it is designed with fun in mind. People smile when they play regardless of their age, station, or whatever, and you'll smile too playing Super Mario Bros. 1 through 3 in the Lost Levels. Well, that's not true. You won't smile during the Lost Levels, but the rest you will. As a matter of fact, you likely wouldn't spit on the Lost Levels if they were on fire. <laughs> Revenge. Zelda 1 and Zelda 2. Before Link was hang gliding, he was this elf looking, no GPS having pop breaker chopping down shrubs like a manic gardener in this medieval scavenger hunt. There are two versions on the Switch for these games and they're basically like, uh, easier? Easier modes of the game? And that is welcomed. Zelda 1 isn't too difficult with the strategy guide, but if Mario is as eternal as the portal to hell, Zelda 2 is what lies beyond the door. Don't get me wrong, I'm here for it, but I think there's a word for a person like me sometimes. I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins. But with all your magic and life and such already leveled up in the special version of Zelda 2, hey, it's definitely the easiest way to wrangle this game. You know, I talk about retro video games pretty often, and often some obscure ones. And it occurred to me that not everyone has access to these or is willing to emulate because, hey, that's kind of morally gray, right? So that's why I made this list. Let's continue. It's all for you! Dr. Mario. Tetris with pills. Plumbing is boring, but hey, pharmaceuticals aren't. Our medical strategy involves throwing oversized vitamins at a bunch of sentient viruses. Let's face it, insurance is expensive, so instead of using the healthcare system, put your faith in gravity-defying pills and color-matching skills, baby. Woo! This will eradicate those pixelated pathogens. It's a bizarre medical approach, but at least it's fun. The only thing sicker than your patient is the beat playing in the background while you undoubtedly wreak havoc on someone's immune system. Good job, doctor. Ghosts and goblins, or haints and boogers as we like to call them in the south. This game will test you. Battle zombies, dodge hellish flying red devils, and watch your woman get kidnapped by demons, all while wearing armor made from the finest aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. foil. Arthur's resilience is impressive, and so is yours if you make it remotely far into this hellscape of a game. But, to be fair, it's oddly addictive, like picking at a fresh scab or something. It's a little nasty, but whatever. This is a game that separates the boys from the men, so if you need me, I'll be enjoying my lollipop on the swing set. If you remember this being hard, good news mates, your memory isn't going yet. Better hope your hand-eye coordination hasn't either. Listen, I'm a shill for Nintendo, I get it, but for 50 bucks a year, you can get the Nintendo Switch Online Pack. That's the equivalent of renting 50 games for around 20 cents each for a year. I think it's totally worth it, and that's how I'm playing these games. And here's some more. Donkey Kong. A tale of simian vendettas and questionable workplace safety where the ultimate goal is to rescue a damsel in distress. Donkey Kong, even after years and years, is still a solid go-to game. It's not the pre-rendered sprite love child that we're willing to fist fight in the streets over, but it's definitely still one of the funnest and most addictive arcade games out there. If I only had one quarter to call and check on Mamma in the hospital, I'd be jumping barrels and swinging hammers instead. Yes, this game is more fulfilling than knowing the state of your grandmother's health. Uh, I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad to see you too, Grandma. I've been thinking about you all the time. Punch Out with no Mike Tyson. Womp womp. We like to think size doesn't matter, but then there's Little Mac, right? While he's armed with a killer uppercut, unfortunately, cheeky optimism doesn't keep your teeth in your mouth. A wise man once said, everyone has a plan until you're punched in the mouth. There's just something about learning you're not the biggest and baddest dude around that's so simultaneously humbling yet encouraging. Some days you might think you want to jack up Glass Joe for his stupid looking face, but then you have to remember that Mike Tyson, oh, I mean, Mr. Dream exists. 
If you're not being mercilessly beat to a pulp, are you truly what? living? Confidences are made and broken in Punch-Out, and it's time to learn that lesson again, folks. And here's something else you can learn without getting punched in the face. Learn to love again. Dial 1-800, please hit that subscribe button, or just watch some more videos if you're into this sort of thing, you know. I appreciate it. Thank you. Earthbound Beginnings. It's better if you ignore that absolutely horrifying beginning story and just get started where you're a normal kid and it's a lamp, oh! Really, I think I said it best in my video about Earthbound Beginnings. Both of this baby leads to the same messed up line. Doll doesn't move anymore. Doll shouldn't move in the first place. You're the kid, stop the alien invasion. These adults have better things to do, man. This game is suburban surrealism. Why does nobody care that the world is ending? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! If you thought Earthbound was campy and weird, hey, buckle up. That tree doesn't fall far from the apple. Or something like that. Kirby's Adventure. Someone's been stealing dreams, and it's not the general disillusionment of the population nor the declining economy of the United States. But you know what? Suck them. You heard me correctly. Suck them. Be a culinary chameleon and adopt their powers and use it against them. Picture this, a pink spherical vacuum cleaner of destruction floating through whimsical landscapes, swallowing and hollering. Kirby proves that heroes come in different shapes and sizes, and this one just happens to be Bubblegum Vengeance. Metroid. Spoiler, she's a chick. Navigate through a labyrinthian alien world filled with creatures that will make even H.R. Geiger raise an eyebrow. The creatures are actually the easy part, honestly, as the navigation, even with a map, is crazy intense. The absolute isolation of this game is daunting, haunting, and rhyming. It's lonelier than a hitmonly ladies night at the club. <laughs> Samus, clearly, is tougher than shoe leather. What's that cheerleader doing with the helmet on? That's no cheerleader, that's my niece Becky. Take an opportunity to speed walk through these corridors while collecting upgrades and looking for Mother Brain. No relation to your actual mother. No relation to Gygus either, I, I don't think. That's just a theory. A game theory. Sadness. Journey to Celius. When your father dies under mysterious circumstances, you have options. But those don't really matter as it's time to put on your spacesuit and start blasting robots. I started blasting. Jay's journey takes him through mechanical wastelands filled with drones and laser shooting contraptions. It's a tale of revenge in a world where platforms and pitfalls are more dangerous than crapping in a well after dark. This game is relentless. It's fair, but daggone it's hard. Turn your grief into griefing as you destroy all robots in this high-octane, side-scrolling action game like your therapist was Mega Man or something. PSA, don't listen to Mega Man or the voices. Roger, Captain X. Opening shutters. <laughs>